Hello there. This is scandalous. We pay them a fortune, and what do we get in return? So no wonder our tax bill is so high. There are more civil servants than ever before, and on mega high salaries to boot. That's right. The number of civil servants has ballooned, and the number of them on over a hundred grand a year has doubled. So there is a massive growth industry in town, the civil service. And according to the latest from the Taxpayers Alliance, the TPA, from March 2016 to March 2023, civil service employment rocketed by 101,440 to 519,780. That's a rise of 24.2%, and is a rise far larger than the number of troops in the British Army. Now, I had expected maybe a small rise in the number of civil servants once we'd left the EU, in order to soak up any admin load we reshored once we'd left the bloc after Brexit. But 24.2%? And that's the largest increase in five decades. And as a comparison to our over half a million civil servants, the EU institutions employ over 60,000 from the EU 27 member states. So reshoring our portion of that would have been about 2,000 or so extra, not this huge rise of over 100,000 we've now seen. And as you would guess, the biggest increase was seen in London, over 25,000 more civil servants a rise of 33%. And here was me thinking that the levelling up plan was to have more civil servants spread around the country. But on top of that, the number of civil servants in top pay grades of over £100,000 a year has increased by 88% from 1,090 in 2016 to 2,050. 195 of them are on over 150 grand. And it gets worse. The annual salary bill for full-time staff has increased by 59.8% from March 2016 to March 2023, rising from £9.7 billion to £15.5 billion, says the TPA. As well as... The median average civil service salary increased by 26% over the period. Now, the TPA goes on to explain that much of this growth has been top-heavy. To get around attempts to limit pay rises, the top mandarins have been promoting more people into higher grades, with 87% of the increase being accounted for by growth in the top three levels, who receive between £73,000 and £208,100, plus pension contributions of 30% on top of that it says. And then it says that there was a decrease in the number of people in the lowest grade level that also used to be the most numerous. And this has skewed the civil service away from operational delivery and onto policy and support functions. Operational delivery, frontline services, fell from 56% of total staff to 52%, says the TPA. So that would explain why one public body, HMRC, is shutting down a critical self-assessment tax phone line for three months. It's a trial to force people to use their online systems instead, with the phone line to be resurrected in September in the run-up to the self-assessment deadline to deal with customers who've been unable to use the online system. That way the staff can concentrate on other calls for these three months and then switch back in September. But to achieve that, we seem to need a whole new army of super-paid, top-level civil servants. And one wonders if all we'll end up with is a permanently clogged-up self-assessment phone line after September. And as the TPA points out, 
The average wage bill escalation of nearly 55% is twice the increase in the country's nominal GDP. The chief executive of the TPA, John O'Connell, said, With the tax burden at near record levels, taxpayers are paying through the nose for the boom in public sector employment. What's more, there is a growing sense that public services are worse than before the hiring spree, not better. Only once politicians start to be honest about what the state can reasonably be expected to do can we wind down functions and scrap unnecessary jobs. And ONS figures on civil service productivity backs this up. Because output per hour worked fell by 0.6% in quarter one this year compared to the same period last year. And output per worker fell 0.9%. And output per job fell 1%. And that productivity slide started a few years ago. The ONS says that total UK public service productivity fell by 0.2% in 2019, the first fall for eight years. Then in 2020, the latest the ONS has on this, it dropped by 15% due to the health emergency. And my guess is that it hasn't recovered from the new pretend-to-work-from-home apparatus. Where in some departments, something like 50% of them work from home. Something illustrated by this graph of public sector productivity from the baseline of 1997. That shows hours worked in green, output per hour worked in red, and gross value added in blue. Productivity rises over time, but was hit after the credit crunch in 2008, but it did soon recover, although output per hour looks a bit sluggish. And the next big hit, a big one, occurred as a result of the pandemic. But now, despite all the extra people and the pay, productivity appears to be levelling off instead of once again improving over time. And we, the taxpayers, are paying for it all. The upshot is that we're paying far more than we ever did for more people to provide a poorer service. With Tory MP Jacob Rees-Mogg saying, The clear inefficiency of working from home means that more people are doing less work. And another Tory MP, John Redwood, said, the civil service is far too top-heavy, and the big increase in top management has coincided with a big decline in productivity. Adding, We need fewer people to deliver more, which should be quite possible, given the huge difference in productivity growth between the public and private sectors. And Keir Starmer's Labour Party would make it far worse. I bet they don't have any plans to reduce the civil service headcount or rein in on their pay. And this comes out just when Rishi Sunak is claiming that there's clear blue water between the Tories and Labour. But this burgeoning civil service and its pay bill tells us all a very different story. Big state, big borrow, big tax, big spend just like Labour. And despite calls from Tory MPs for the Prime Minister to put a freeze on public sector recruitment, I doubt much will change. I'm not sure that Rishi wants a head-to-head -head with the civil service just before a general election. Don't want to spark any more strikes, do we? Then there's the risk of suddenly having a slew of bullying claims being made against government ministers. And how many of those extra 100,000 are checking asylum claims at a leisurely glacial pace?